The wiring diagram used in this video I downloaded from nostalgiaair.org and I have supplied links to this information in the show more of this video. This is the wiring diagram of the Stuart Warner model 1301 and what I'm going to do is start testing out the coils to determine if this radio is worthwhile fixing or not and I'm going to start in the lower right hand corner with the power transformer and then go up to the upper right corner to the audio output transformer. Let's take a look at that 80 tube I have pulled out the 80 tube and the 42 tube in this set. But this 80 tube, and there's a link to that to Nostalgia Air also. I've redrawn it here to emphasize that that tube filaments, one and four, those pins are physically larger. And this view is from the inside of the chassis, or another way to say it, would be the bottom view. There's no particular order that you have to do this in. But I'm going to start here with the primary of the power transformer. And here's a closer picture of that transformer from the inside of the chassis. And here are the two connections that I'm going to put an ohmmeter across to see if the primary is open or not. It should read only a few ohms. It should not be open. Okay. Here's one side of the primary here, and the other side is right here on the switch. That reads about 11.5 ohms. A little over 11 ohms is good. Now I'm going to move to the secondary that goes to the 80 rectifier and here is the socket and we're gonna find a small discrepancy between the way it's wired and the drawing and it doesn't matter in this case but you run into that quite often and you have to determine if it's a problem or not anyway here is how the tube counts. Here is where I'm going to be testing the secondary that goes to the 80 tube. Now this center tap is not wired right. Somebody's rewired it. It should go through 300 ohm resistor but here it's going to ground. While I'm here I'm going to test between the center tap and both sides of the plates of the 80, say 310, and this side is 283 and across that will be about the sum. Yeah. Now I'm going to check the filament coil that goes to the 80 tube and here are the test points one and four. Okay, now I'm going to read 
between one and four here. An 80 tube. Like dot five, something like that. Let's see if I can get a better connection here. Now to test the 6 volt filament coil out of the power transformer. I'm going to do that a little bit differently. I have the 80 tube and the 40 tube unplugged, but it's the 80 tube that's important. Now to test the other filament, I've got the 80 unplugged and the 42 unplugged, but it's the 80 that's important. That way there's no B plus in here. I'm going to put power to this to test the last filament and if this lights up we should be good. I'm going to use my Variac and I'm only going to use about 60 volts, something like that. Okay, we can see that the tube lit. So that transformer is definitely good. Here is the 42 tube socket. And this is how the pins count. You can see one and six are the larger pins and here is the 80 and the 42 and I'm going to be using pin 4 of the 80 although it'll show as 1 in the wiring diagram and pin 2 of the 42 to do the next test Now remember the 80 tube, I'm actually going to be using pin 4 and showing as 1 here. But when I use that connection up to pin 2 of the 42, it will test the field coil continuity and also the primary of the audio transformer. Okay, now we're going to test the field coil and the primary of the audio output by putting an ohmmeter on pin 4 of the 80 and pin 2 of the 42. Yep, about 1,500 ohms, so it appears that both of those are good. Now to check the secondary of the audio and the speaker itself, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to use a 9 volt battery. Okay, now I've got a 9 volt battery. An old one, it's only putting out 7 volts or so, maybe 6. And I'm going to hook that up to pin 4 of the 80. And I'm going to touch pin 2 of the 42 to see if we can hear some noise. And we do. So that means the speaker and the audio transformer is good. I'll continue testing the coils in the next video, 
But I hope this video gave you some ideas of how I check the coils and as you can see in this video I try to check multiple coils if possible. Thanks for watching.